Hey, welcome back to another week with my beautiful face. It is Friday. Hold on, wait a minute. Let me put some shirts in. It's Friday, May 5th, aka Cinco de Mayo, aka Margsmas, aka National Marg Day. Actually, I guess it would be International Marg Day since it's a Mexican holiday, not an American holiday. Are we in slow motion right now? I can't tell. It don't matter. AKA, I really like tequila. It's about 10.30. I'm gonna hit the gym. Okay, so we just got to the gym. If you follow me, you know that I go to Gold's Gym, which is here. But within Gold's Gym, in the same exact building, literally attached with nothing separating them, there's another gym called CrossFit The Rack. It's like a CrossFit center. They're two completely different business entities. Um, Gold's Gym obviously is a very big business. They're like nationwide. Um, and they already use Facebook advertising. CrossFit The Rack, however, does not. And they're someone, they're a business that I've wanted to try to work with. And I haven't gone in and talked to the owners yet, so I'm actually do that today and kind of pitch them and see if I can hopefully maybe set up another meeting after this, like a strategy meeting, uh, but try to get them as another client of mine. Obviously, like fitness, nutrition is a is something that I'm into and I, I'd like to work with uh, a company in that niche to kind of see if maybe that's something I want to do going forward to work with more gyms I feel kind of weird only because like I'm about to work out too I don't know whether to work out before or work out after or like I just drank my pre-workout So I don't want to be talking to them and be all like jittery But I also don't want to go talk to them after I work out because I'm gonna be sweating <sighs> So it should be interesting. I'm a little nervous. So I'm gonna practice in the car practice my pitch a little bit what I'm gonna say Smooth them over, finesse them, finagle them, bagel them. What else rhymes with eagle? Whatever. I'm gonna go in there, and by the time the next time you see me, I will either have good news or not good news. But it's again, it's Cinco de Mayo, so it's it's only good things today. It's only it's it's Mark season, baby. It's Mark season. Oh my God, it's downpouring. I was like sprinted from the front door. Okay, so went in. Talk to the owner. Don't know if it's good or bad yet. Sounded interested. Gave me his card. I have to email him over a proposal. Basically, you know, all the services I can provide, what I can do. I only talked to one guy. He has two other business partners that are like co-owners of the place. So he's going to have to get the proposal, talk to them about it. All in all, good. Nervous. Got in there. Got the damn thing done. And that's it, man. You just take action on things. You either do something or you don't. Things aren't going to get done themselves. That's that. And I'll see y'all in a little bit. All right. So we're finished up for the day. Got the video for tomorrow morning already uploaded. Got the thumbnail finished up. We got, uh, I was working on the proposal for the gym pretty much all day. So a lot of work to be done there. And uh, now we're gonna take it easy. It's Friday, long week, a lot of good work done. Time to celebrate Cinco de Mayo by uh, diving headfirst into 13 to 65 margaritas tonight. It's officially Marg season. Probably see you in the morning and I'm probably gonna look not good. See you then. I don't know about the stress filled day. Baby on the way, man, bills to pay. It was just like you, smoking blunts with my crew, flipping on the 62. I got P A I D. I don't wanna live no more. All right, homies. Lowest the volumes. It's the next morning, obviously. It's like 10 a.m. Slept in a little later than I should have. I'm gonna thank the Marks for that one. I gotta get some work done. Look at this freaking coffee cup. How epic is that shit? Jack Skellington, let's go. Coffee cups are so underrated. If you have a good coffee cup, really start your day off, man. I'll tell you what, you got a coffee cup like this, how can you be pissed? See, this is the problem with working for yourself and working at home. There are days like this where you wake up and you're like, F everything. I'm just gonna lay in bed all day. I ain't gonna do shit. That ain't how it works. <sighs> nah, I gotta stop being a little biatch. I have nothing good to say. I always feel I am my best self when I'll come over. Just got that freaking great workout in. Ain't had a leg workout like that since Nam. Now we got Starbucks, put some work in, and then we headed back to that bar I was at two nights ago to watch the Rangers game because it's 30 mark season still. So we're going to grab some marks. What is up? It's Sunday around noon. I slept till 10 o'clock today. I don't think I've slept to 10 o'clock since that might be the first time I slept past 10 o'clock 
in the last year. I think I could confidently say that. I'm mocking up ads right now for the campaign. Basically in the Facebook platform, you create the ads here. Which is, uh, which is pretty cool if you've never seen it before. And this is like a typical, if you're going down your Facebook feed, you see like this is what you'd see in your ad, right? So you mock it up in there and then you kind of split test them and see what happens. So we're gonna finish that up. I need to get a video out for, I've only done like vlog videos cause I don't like to do, if I don't have a good camera, I don't like to do the, uh, like the informational videos cause I feel like the quality's not good, but this is actually not that bad. So I'm gonna do a fantasy video today. I'm gonna do an early top five sleepers cause the sleeper ones get a lot of engagement. A lot of views. I want to get to the gym. It always closes early on Sundays, like five. So realistically, I don't even think I'm going to be able to get there. I just have like to-do lists everywhere around my room from like random days. Oh, I have to work on the proposal for the CrossFit gym as well. So those are the three things I'm taking care of today. I gotta mock up the ad, fantasy video that I'm gonna do. I'm sure I'll do a blog post for it too. Finish up the proposal. This coffee mug is like the size of my head almost. And it was full when I started. Oh, so my tripod broke, right? This one, I think I put it in the last video. This leg just like snapped off. So I was pissed off because I only had it for like a month. I went on Amazon, left them let them a review, one star that bit. And within like literally like an hour, the company emailed me. Oh, we're gonna send you a free one. So they sent me a free one. That's actually what the counter's on right now. So that's what's up. For the most part, it's a lot of small companies that try to get out there on Amazon and that's where you're ordering from. And those reviews obviously are everything because when you're shopping on Amazon, you usually just filter by the, you're not gonna buy something that's like two and a half stars. So leave a bad review, there's a good chance that they will hit you up and say, hey, we wanna do this for free or we wanna give you, you know, your money back or whatever. So suggest doing that if you order off Amazon like I do. Next day, May 8th, it's almost noon. Slept way too late again. But we finished the, the mock-ups of the ads, sent them over to the client. They had just a few minor changes, made the changes, and now we are about to officially go live. As soon as I click this button, review them changes, and we are off. Boom. Oh, so, it's exciting stuff. I know I've been working on this proposal for longer than I probably even need to be doing. I'm gonna head to the gym to work out in probably a few hours and I wanna get that done beforehand. I mean, when I went and spoke to the company, uh, the guy gave me his card and his info and he, he said to like, you know, email over the proposal when I write it up. But to be honest with you, I'd rather get it done, get a hard copy into him, you know, hand it off and speak to him in person rather than just through an email. And then if the other owners are, are there too, I'd like to introduce myself. The more you can kind of personalize the I guess experience, I think the better um, chances you have at, at succeeding that way. And hopefully we'll have a, a follow up, maybe meeting or a strategy session that I can go in there and kind of really give them a good pitch. I wanna grow my beard out too. Well, I don't really grow it out, but it comes in patches. But like this area always grows so much thicker and faster than like my side. So I have to trim this when I grow it out, but then it looks like, I don't know, freaking know. I'm the worst. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, this shit looks pretty. Pretty pumped up about this. I have the proposal all finished. It's a little long, but it's taken up by a bunch of charts and stuff. So now I kind of have this going forward for all of the clients in the future. And it's also something if I want to reach out to clients, um, if I can't get to them face to face, Rather than just sending them a, a random cold email, I can include the proposal so you know they have an attachment, they have something to work off of immediately because a lot of the companies probably see an email about someone wanting to market for their company and they kind of maybe see it as spammy, but if, if you um, include something that you know is official and they have stuff to read off of, maybe it catches their eye, that could be the difference maker. I'm gonna do a little bit of writing. I'm not even sure what like blog post I'm on right now, um, but I'm gonna do that probably for another hour and then head to the gym. So I'll keep y'all posted on how this goes. So I just got finished at the gym and I, uh, I went back there and I gave the proposal, but the owner I spoke to last week was not there. So I gave it to, is actually his brother, who's a co-owner. He was in the middle of like doing stuff with clients. So I didn't want to bother him long. I just kind of handed it off. He's going to give it to his brother and the other owners and whatnot. So hopefully I hear back tomorrow or the next day or something like that. Um, if not, I could always, you know, I'm, I go to the gym that they work in. So I could always go back there and follow up in like a week or something if I don't hear back, but it's out of my hands now. So was good. There we're gonna be legends. It's uh, it is May 9th. It's around 11 a.m. Got up super early this morning, around 6:30. I'm done with that sleep name bullshit. Since I launched that campaign yesterday, I wanted to check on it after a day. I know it's only 24 hours in, but the results from 
the last day are very promising. So I, I honestly think we got a home run here on this uh, with this partnership between myself and Fantasy Jock. So I think we're going to kill it. And what I've been working on is, you know, obviously setting up the campaigns, running them, optimizing them, all that kind of stuff. The creative work is part of my job, but on top of that, you also have to, you know, give weekly reports and communicate with the client throughout, let them know how the campaigns are going. So I took a template that I actually created from my previous job. It's like the, it's the reporting I'm going to be giving to the client just so they know uh, what's going on. And, you know, they have all the numbers and the key metrics that they like to see and it helps me track it as well because sometimes a lot of numbers get involved a lot of analytics and it could be a little overwhelming but if you're able to kind of organize it into one sheet or one like game plan then it's much easier to track and it's much easier to make decisions and optimizations based on that so trying to tidy it up make it look professional as possible so he's happy I'm happy, we all happy. It's Tuesday, Titty Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. I'm about to head to Starbucks and pull stuff for a few hours, probably like four or five hours. I ain't talking no barista shift, George. And from there, I'm gonna hit the gym. I'm gonna go straight to Starbucks, straight to the gym. I've been craving Chipotle, so I think I'm gonna hit Chipotle after the gym later. Oh, I also went ahead and pulled the trigger on two pairs of shoes from Amazon this morning. Or was it Amazon? Maybe one was Nike, one was Amazon. So I have some new shoes coming my way. I'm probably not gonna do a review on them, but I'll definitely show you them in this video. I don't like to do reviews on like products unless they're actually like new. Like there's no point in me doing a review on like Nike Air Max 2015s, right? Cause they've been out for like 17 years already. So I'll show you all which ones I got. They're all white. All I do is buy white shit and just ruin it immediately. But as I got older, I've gotten better with shoes. Probably cause I'm not like at house parties and like running from the cops through woods and shit like that you know you spend a lot of money on these things it, t it pays to keep them clean so you don't have to keep purchasing new ones one shoe a couple of shoes that i always buy like i always buy let me see i have that pair of the white regular vans right there yeah i have so many shoes just laying around everywhere those white vans are like 40 45 bucks here's the thing yo so it's what day is it i don't know may is it may yeah it's may it's may 10th i'm tired today man i don't think i have a starbucks session in me grab coffee oh my god there's a train tracks jesus christ all trains coming down i just hit a red light so i'll be at duncan it's literally right there i can see it but i'll be there in like 45 minutes probably probably gonna grab a donut too you gotta love me some donuts i was jamming out i'm gonna hop open the window Nothing like a little Jay-Z at 9.40 a.m. I want to sit down and kind of exp and look into the Facebook platform a little bit more with you guys. And I want to give you some tips if you're in the marketing, you know, if you graduated with a marketing degree or you don't even have to have graduated with a marketing degree, but tips how to get a job in that industry and something that's actually interesting. Best of all, these heat bottles are available. I'm telling you, y'all are sleeping on my love for donuts. Me and Steve, we're thinking about at some point this summer doing actually well we have two cha food challenges in mind first being Krispy Kreme challenge in which we see how many Krispy Kremes we can eat actually that's bullshit because he's not even gonna do it he's just gonna watch me do it suffer how many Krispy Kreme donuts I can eat in an hour I said I think I can get like 45 down I think I'll put down like 17 in the first like six to seven minutes those things are like Tastes so good, but I feel like I'll hit a wall at 27 to 30, somewhere in that range, and then I'll want to throw up, and the rest of it will just be like me wanting to die. So maybe we'll do that if enough people want to see it. The one I'm definitely going to do at some point is the 10,000 calorie challenge. So you have a full day to eat 10,000 calories. I don't think that's just going to be a problem for me at all. Pretty sure, like two days ago, I ate like 6,000 calories. I could do 10,000 without a shout and doubt in my mind. For some reason, that's like a big thing in the fitness like community on YouTube. Like everyone does a 10,000 calorie challenge. I guess it gets a shitload of views and stuff, but I want to try just because I want my fat ass to eat a bunch of Chick-fil-A. It's annoying because obviously I like to work out and I like to watch what I eat. So then you do one of those challenges. You know, if I eat like fucking 50 Krispy Kreme donuts, that's, I don't do, I didn't do the math. And I don't feel like doing the math, but I feel like that's, like two to three weeks of dieting kind of down the drain, you know? Meh. Mm. I would normally get a different kind of donut. They had nothing good to offer me. I'm pissed at you, Duncan. 
I love you, but I'm just angry at you a little bit right now. All right, so I'm inside the Facebook platform, and I can't really show you really what I'm working on, I guess, because it's not my information per se. It's the companies that I'm working with. Maybe I'll let go from back here. You can't read that shit anyways. Basically, the Facebook advertising platform has an algorithm that when you send out an ad, it chooses on its own, you know, who's going to see this ad, how much it's going to cost to see the ad. And, and obviously Facebook wants to give its customers, like people, users, the best experience when they're on Facebook, right? So they're trying to match your ad with the best customer or the best person on Facebook so that you know you experience better results as well as Facebook itself does, right? They don't want to show a 97-year-old grandma a picture of a fucking Harley Davidson. She ain't buying that shit, right? Making these ads is all about targeting the right audience, doing the right copy, and copy just means the wording, the text that's actually on the ad. Creative means the picture, image, or video that's within the ad. Basically, when you set these things live, it will tell you within 48 hours which 48 to 72 hours which ads are gonna work and which ads are not gonna. So it's really inexpensive to test them, see which work, and then and then flip them out. So it's really this big game of kind of A-B testing and working your way up the ladder. What I was gonna say for marketing purposes, I know a lot of people that you know went to school for marketing, went to school for business, they don't really know what they're doing. What I would suggest to you guys is to learn Go online or find someone that knows how to do this, knows knows the Facebook platform and is willing to teach you. Go online and Google and just type in free Facebook advertising course. You could find it's it's the internet. It'll you you'll be able to find something on it, trust me. So what you should do is learn the course. You know, if you're into marketing, if you're into advertising, it even works for the creative type because there is a creative process to this whole thing as well. If you're into analytics, if you're into numbers, that kind of thing, this all comes full circle and wraps around. And you don't have to worry about the shit that I'm talking about because I'm trying to build a business. I'm not just specifically in Facebook all day, you know? So I'm, I'm, I have the other kind of stuff going on that I need to focus on. But if you're in marketing and you're having trouble finding a job that you enjoy or you're, you're having trouble figuring out what you want to do, I would suggest learning the Facebook platform. It'll, yeah, it'll take a little time. It'll take a little effort to go out of your way to learn it. But this is a skill that's super, super, super valuable right now. And a lot of big media agencies, think of it this way, as the marketing landscape adapts, right? You go into a marketing company and you have your supervisor, they have their supervisors, they have their supervisors. None of them are in touch with, unless they're really good at their job, they're not really in touch with the Facebook, the Instagram platforms, right? They're counting on people like you, you and me, who are like generation, what are we, generation X? I forget what generation we're even in. But this generation to learn these things, right? So if you go into a job interview for marketing and tell them that you know this skill, this is a super valuable skill, they'll hire you strictly off this. I can promise you that. Because as in the, in the coming years, these big brands, these Fortune 500 companies are gonna be moving their marketing dollars from TV, display advertising, to the social media, to Facebook, to Instagram, to Snapchat and things like that. So if you can get in now, because these older people don't know the platform, they need people like you. So learn the skill, go in there, tell them that you know the platform well, they will jump on you because that's a skill that's really helpful. You don't, Obviously, you're not going to learn that in school because marketing classes are 10 years behind where they need to be. But if you go out on your own and learn it, people are going to love that. And it's really valuable because not a lot of people know it. And like I said, as the industry shifts, this is going to become way more pertinent in a lot of businesses marketing plans. So if you could learn this, you could land a good job doing social media marketing for a lot of big companies or for a lot of marketing agencies, whatever your plan is, you know? And from there, the sky's kind of the limit on, on what you want to learn. Once you get your foot in the door and once you have that, I promise it's a huge asset. You know, you separate yourself from People that just say, oh, I have a marketing degree on my on my, on my my resume. I have experience as a fucking cold caller sales person, whatever, you know. It's really a way to separate yourself and it's also a really valuable skill. And even if you're ever trying to start your own business, it's something good to know because you can use this platform to market it. So I would suggest if you're looking for an alternative in the marketing industry to do that, to go out on your own and learn it. It'll take you... It might take you two days. You could, you could sit there for 10 hours, one week and sacrifice one Saturday 
sit on your computer for 10 hours, watch videos, watch tutorials, watch courses, try it. Everyone has a Facebook business manager account. All you have to do is go to business.facebook.com and create your own through your own personal Facebook. Everyone has it. You can go in there and mess around. You don't have to spend any money. Just look at the platform, figure, you know, try to start figuring things out as you're learning. From there, once you learn it, and once you're, you know, once you're more in tune with it, I'm telling you, a lot of companies will be will be looking for people that know this stuff in in the near future. I'm talking about the next one to two years, and if you get your foot in early, like you'll be set in a couple of years. That is my rant on that. I'm going to, because it's been maybe 48 hours since I've launched this. I'm going to stop optimizing the campaign broken down by a million different things you can look at the key metrics like you know click through rate uh cpm impression you know website conversions all that kind of shit you could also break it down like instagram versus facebook if you guys didn't know instagram is owned by facebook so all your instagram marketing is ran right through to the facebook platform which is really cool so you break down facebook through uh instagram you could break it down ages so you could see which uh ads are working best from like 18 to 24 24 to 35 you break it down male versus female, location, I mean, gender. There's a billion different things you could look at. So I'm going to get into that a little bit and then probably start shifting budget around. So I hope that was helpful to a couple of you guys. 12.45. What I'm doing right now is we get this magazine in our uh, in our geo, our area, called the Clipper Magazine. And it's basically just a magazine filled with businesses advertising. So it'll have like restaurants, like $15 off your purchase of 50 bucks or whatever. So this is a good magazine for myself to kind of look at prospective clients that I can go after because this means that they have a marketing budget to begin with. So what I'm doing now is basically finding uh, clients, potential clients in here that I think might be a good fit for what I'm doing, doing a little research on each one, checking out their Facebook page, and then sending an email to them, you know, just trying to gauge their interest in uh, some social media marketing. I'm also sending them messages via their Facebook page just to make sure that they get it. I'm gonna send out a bunch of these. I really don't expect a lot of replies, but even if I get one or two people replying saying, hey, we're interested in hearing more, maybe I can go sit down with them. Maybe I can get on the phone with them or call and see where it goes from there. So and those are things you gotta think about in, in my line of like business, I guess. It's, does the company have a marketing budget to begin with? Because you don't want to go in there, do your whole pitch, say blah, blah, blah. And then at the end, they're like, yeah, but we can't really spend any money because then you just wasted your time. You also need to look at things like, do they have a good base that you can work with, right? Do they have a loyal fan base already? Or are you completely starting from ground zero? If you're starting from ground zero from nothing, it's very hard to build something or run a successful campaign because they have no foundation for the business. You know, it's not, you can't just throw money at Facebook advertising or any kind of marketing advertising and expect your business to blow up, right? You have to look at, you know, the products or services you're offering. You know, if I charge a client, say X amount of dollars per month for my services and everything that they sell is like two to five dollars i would have to make like five thousand sales just to make it worthwhile for them to market with me so there's a bunch of factors that you got to look into when you are looking at potential clients and it's a mistake that you can make in the beginning you know you want to get out there and you want to take on every client that you possibly can just to get your name out there network a little bit and just it's more like an ego thing and just be like, oh, hey, this is, I'm working with this, 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 this. It's important to be smart. That's why I'm taking this whole process kind of slow. I could get out there and try to hook on five, ten clients and overwhelm myself and, and realize that a lot of them aren't a good fit for me. So I'm not trying to do that. So, dudes, it's May 11th, about 10, 15 a.m. That proposal I sent over to the CrossFit company. I sent over, I gave it to them Monday night, so they didn't see it till Tuesday morning. So it's really only been like two days, like a day and a half. I'm not ready to chalk that up as an L yet, but it might be. But I mean, it's a big, it's probably like a big business decision for them. So if they haven't had time to sit down and read it over and talk about it, then, you know, there's, there's, there's some hope still, but I'm not gonna go crazy about it. I have to actually edit up this video. Technology wise, I have the iMac in my room with a dual display. So I have, it's literally just a monitor next to the iMac that you could hook up so that you could use both screens. But it sucks because the iMac itself is like 5K, Retina, all this crazy shit and it looks beautiful. And then you, I hook up the other one, it was cheap, it was like a hundred bucks. And it's like shitty ass resolution and it's not a Mac monitor. So it like, they don't work well with each other. But if I wanted to get one that worked well with the 5K Retina display, like they're like $500 minimum and I'm like, it's not even worth it. And then I have my MacBook Pro laptop and then I have the Microsoft Surface Pro tablet, which is like the, it's like the computer. You could flip it into a tablet, you know, and use, it's like hand touchscreen. Why am I like hand? Like what the fuck? 
So I got a lot of these things. As you can see, I'm very into tech. Oh, I ate so much yesterday. Like I had a huge sandwich, cookies, chips, like just for dinner. And then, you ever been to Jersey Mike's? They just opened one in my town and like they have the regular sub, which is like good. It's like eight inches maybe. And then they have the large, which is like fucking, I can't fit it on the camera. Like this is how big it is. It's like 17 inches. But you can't get like a normal foot long. You gotta get like a two foot long or you gotta eat like a little biatch. So naturally I got the big one. And then my mom comes home from a restaurant in my town with a pizza. So I ate like four slices of that. And now I feel like shit. But we going for sushi tonight. I feel like shit from last night. I ate like so many calories. So I'm probably not gonna to eat anything today and just wait for dinner. L, I got my pre-workout because I want to get a little bit of work in and then go to the gym, but I don't know why I put it in this because I like to drink it on the way there because it hits me pretty quickly. So like literally as soon as I'm about to walk out the door, I'm just gonna like chug this down. I'm actually waiting for a pair of shoes to be delivered. It's supposed to be delivered from 10 to two and it's 10, 15 now. You ever like wanna just wait for the delivery to come? Like I should be going to the gym within like 45 minutes, but I might wait for the shoes to be delivered. I wanna see them and I know like as soon as I leave the door, I'm gonna see UPS coming down the street. Look at this little guy on the front lawn. It's like a gopher. So, dude, what do you think he's thinking right now? Probably like, yo, tree, you got my money, motherfucker. I gave you them drugs last weekend. I want my money, so I'm gonna just stare at you. <laughs> dude, something great. Freshman. Freshman. I think he's love struck. It's a pretty nice tree, I guess. I don't think I've ever liked something in my life as much as. Oh, he's on the move. As much as he's loved the tree, he's ready to. Woo! He done hurt me, though. Oh, yeah. It's unboxing time. These are called the Adidas Tubular Doom. If you don't know anything about Adidas and how their shoe kind of brand took off this year and surpassed Nike, they basically have three shoes that kind of propelled their brand this year. Tubulars, the Ultra Boost, and the NMDs. These are my least favorite of the three. They, they're like stylish, but I hate how they look on foot because they're super flimsy and whatever. The Ultra Boosts, I'll be buying these until I die probably. They're the most comfortable things of all time. They're really expensive though. But I have three pairs of tubulars. I have these, the gray, and then I got these bad boys, the salt and pepper, which I never really wear. Fortunately, these are like really big and really heavy. They have that thick ass sole, even though I should because they're kind of sexy. That's like the problem with all these tubulars. They're really big and kind of like clumsy looking and just like heavy, right? So I size down a half a size in these. I went from, I'm an 11 basically all the Adidas, but I went for 10 and a half maybe to make them a little less kind of baggy. And these retail for 150, the tubular dooms. Adidas had them for 75, they cut the price in half for some reason. And then I had a 15% discount. So I ended up getting them for like 60 bucks. So I'm like, whatever, send them back if I don't like them. Um, I actually really like the look of them so far. They come with this like sock kind of thing that goes around like the ankle, which could suck but I kind of feel like I'm gonna like them. I feel like they're not gonna run well with like jeans. Like I probably wouldn't wear them out, but I'd wear them to the gym. All right, so these are what they look like on foot. I actually kind of like them, I dig them. It almost looks like you're wearing an ankle brace though, to be honest. I don't know, I'm not mad at them. They're loose, like these things are loose. There's space in between them. Yeah, there's a little space, so like maybe you could put this, the laces through this and then tie them. I don't really know, but I actually kind of dig them. I'm gonna keep them. It was a good, good call by me sizing down a half. I'll probably wear them to the gym, break them in a little bit, but I ain't mad at the perch eye. So again, these are the tubular dooms. And all these shoes, all these Adidas shoes come in like, obviously I didn't mention like the Yeezys, because no one under a salary of like 250,000 is buying them shits. For the most part, you can get like any of these shoes in any color, unless like, oh, the old white ones are very hard to get in any of these, they sell out like that, but. Okay, so this video's been long enough already, so we're gonna wrap it up here, that is week eight in the books. So if you enjoyed, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in. Love y'all. I just got a text to say keep going. I just got a check to say keep going. Birdcage, dirt coat, cornbread, cream mode. Everything clear, cold, phone, airplane.